Hi, everyone, and welcome to In Production. I'm here with Marty Shea, who's my friend and yours, a director, producer, writer, Guinness Book of World Record holder, and uh, currently working in C out of Seattle. He moved there recently, and now he's back in Michigan working from home. So um, he only he's still working, so he only has a few minutes for us today, but he's going to let us know um, where he is and what's going on. So Marty, tell us okay. where, where are you living right now and what's your work situation like? Yeah. I moved to Seattle and took a job with T-Mobile uh, in August after freelancing for several years. And um, I'm in their in-house content studio as a producer. And um, I actually was taking my first trip back to Detroit after being there for eight months. Oh, wow. Um, when all the stuff started happening and the, uh, we started getting told to quarantine and there was people at T-Mobile, there were some positive cases. And I was actually on the plane when I got um, an email that said somebody in my studio had um, was positive and we needed to start quarantining. So all my plans got scrapped and I ended up my four or five days in Detroit has turned into six weeks. And my, my friend who uh, I was planning to stay with um, in his guest room, uh, just said, you can stay as long as you want. So I'm here, um, with halfway decent Wi-Fi, okay. um, working f with my team in Seattle. And of course we can't really do production traditionally. We can't travel. We can't have anybody meet and, and a crew meet and, and have a subject, even do an interview. Okay. So we have done a lot of of set up for people to do self-filming. Everyone from the CEO of T-Mobile to vice president to people on the field, um, the people who go in and have to update the network. For, for instance, there is a, um, a Navy ship, a US Navy ship called Mercy that we um, are about, I think it might've gone live today on T-Mobile social. Um, and he, his job was to go and upgrade the tower closest to this ship. So they all had T-Mobile Wi-Fi. Okay. And we made a video to, to about his experience. It's a three minute cool video and um, sent him a kit. Mm -hmm. So he could like a webcam kit and um, gave him some instructions and coached him and did an interview live. And it turned out really well because we have talented editors and graphics people. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, so can you tell us what's in the kit that you guys are sending out? And also um, where might we, let me see if I can add, um, I'm gonna add a banner. Where can we see more of this content from T-Mobile? Um, T-Mobile um, Instagram. So if you just go on Instagram, T-Mobile, our YouTube channel, and um, I believe Facebook feed as well okay. for all of stories. Um, I can. No, you oh. keep talking, I'll look it up. Okay, uh, oh. I was gonna pull up the kit and tell you more specifically. Oh yeah, we'd it. love to. I think people would really be interested in what um, what the kit is. I mean, we have everything from um, stands that hold iPhones to an actual webcam to microphones, um, tripods. Um, and so there's, it depends on the situation and what the person needs to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then a whole document that gives them tips on how to best film themselves film B-roll footage of their day-to-day -day life. So we have a, a guy who drove around in his car and filmed like kind of the empty streets that he normally, that would be normally busy with people and where he um, had to switch um, a lot of the antennas and the higher traffic from the cities to the suburbs and then wow. the other to the Navy ship specifically, which is a really cool story. <laughs> and then we also we also um, have a uh, a care coach um, uh, coming out soon. Um, a story about somebody who's one of the customer service people, and um, how they I think something like twelve thousand to fourteen thousand people had to be moved, including their equipment. Like they took their computers and their yeah. headsets and and all of that technology. So nothing's really you know. slowed down for you. Like you got off the plane, you went to work here in Detroit. And it's pretty much the same. Is it? Is are you pretty much doing like the same as far as coordinating, talking to people, all that? It's definitely different, but it's has an ebb and flow. But it's a different kind of ebb and flow because you're stuck in the same house. Yeah. And 
luckily I had vacation time at the beginning. So it was nice to have to keep that and, and adjust. So I, I didn't have any pressure at first. When I jumped back in, I wasn't sure what to expect and everybody was busy and they're busy because we're changing messaging and we had to get it out fast. Yeah. Right. So, um, is this what you always wanted to do was work at T-Mobile and be a producer there or what, what has your path been to this job that you have now? Um, <laughs> in, you know, I, in, I, I, words are less. <laughs> I got into this because I love movies and creativity of filmmaking. Um, Along the way, I just had such a variety. As a freelancer, you take whoever calls, and it could be a music video, a commercial, a movie, uh, industrial, a short film, you know. And and so um, I've gotten to just love my job. Uh, I like working. I like working with good people and talented people. People who can do things that I can't do, and then um, they, they make me look good, even though all I'm doing is, you know, checking in and making sure things happen, scheduling things, and you know, being creative with process while they're being creative with content. So when do you think, like, when did you finally say, I'm actually making a living doing this. Like I figured it out. I, I get to do this. When did, was there a moment when that happened for you or a period of time when you're like, Oh, I'm doing it. It was yeah, pretty early looking back. Like, I mean, I started out, well, you got me my first job or I guess my second job because <laughs> I showed up on a set as an unpaid intern during college, met you, got your number, or I can't remember what the order is, but then I kept calling you until there was another independent film in Detroit and I was like, I'm there. And within like a year, I was probably full-time freelancing as a production assistant and soon after as a production coordinator and a second AD. Um, so yeah, I remember just loving the fact that I didn't have to go back to the corporate job. I actually worked at a customer service job for a while that I hated and um, I love this lifestyle, yeah. Well, I do like to do um, a little bit of photos, so. Oh. <laughs> we we that, remember where this is, in which movie this is? Hands, Port Huron? There we are, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, I can't, 2004. Ago? Okay, 16 years ago. Wow, there you are. <laughs> yeah, a few extra pounds back then. Right, yes, here we are on the beach. Yeah, I needed a baseball cap that You're day. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, those were, those were some fun times. So I was trying to like list off all of the things that we've worked on together. And wow. um, man, this one, my favorite thing was I, um, was the audio guy who said, it's an odd, it's a boom pole, not a magic wand. Oh, there yeah. we are. This is Comerica. So yep. we were also able to do a bunch of uh, corporate stuff. This was 2007. So um, yeah. There we are at the bank. Yep, I remember those. We get, we had a nice string of those for a while. Oh, well, there's Tom. See, and there's all these people that that um, yeah, we're still in touch with today. There's Mike. I haven't talked to anybody in the audio department yet. So, what would be some of your advice for someone that wants to do um, what you've been doing? And uh, how, how did you? How do you feel like? You know, now looking back the 20, you know, 25 plus years that you've been doing this, what would you tell someone today that wants to have a career in film and video production? It really depends on what you want to do. And, and uh, I mean, I think my first question is always, do you really, really want to do this? Because there's a lot of people I've seen try it out and some are luckier than others, but also some don't like what you, you know, have to go through at the beginning, the long hours, the unpredictable schedules the need to travel, um, sometimes okay. <laughs> sitting there bored for hours. You know, there's a lot of reasons not to do this, yeah. but if you really love it and know where you want to go with it or have an idea, um, there's a lot of paths. And I think the best thing is to just try to get on any set, even you know, any semi-professional set, like work with people who have experience. Sometimes you'll have the pros kind of come and work on a student film or, or even, you know, uh, like a say an NYU or you know a good um, where they know what they're doing, so you're learning the 
process correctly and then see if you like it. And usually it's the connections. It's knowing someone who will recommend you to the next job. But if you know specifically you want to be a sound person or a cinematographer or lighting person, then I think school is often a better way to do that. But I know some really successful people who did not go to film school at all and work on giant you know, movies and TV shows as gaffer or whatever. Right. And I mean, I, I think it's always, it's about the network you develop and where do you want to be living? Because that's the network that you're going to end up established in and continue to, you know, to, to refer you to other jobs and everything like that. So um, what do you think's next as far as with T-Mobile? Like when, when do you plan on going back to Seattle? And um, it, how, what do you think of the no. switch back to like, how are you going? How are, how is a production business? I mean, as a production man, manager or coordinator, um, you know, you're in charge of like the safety and well-being and the hiring and everything. So, how are people going to go back to work? Um, there's a lot I could say about that, but in a nutshell, I mean, we were just told our studio will not be back um, for at least a month. Um, so we're working remotely. We also just merged with Sprint, and they have a in-house studio that we're starting to figure out how we're going to work with them. And there's a lot of uncertainty with between everything that's going on. This is a very strange time. But we've also been, um, my executive producer, my boss, has been sharing a lot of um, procedures that, that different companies have been posting. And like Hollywood people have been saying, like, this is how we're going to have to do things, and uh, including things like, um, you know, production office has to have like a one way path in and out and you have to minimize who goes in the motor home and um, people are gonna have to start parking their own cars and things are gonna take a little longer. Casting sessions have to be done by video as much as possible mm -hmm. and you can't stack everybody, you can't have seven people waiting in the waiting room now, you're right. gonna have to space them apart. So it's gonna slow things down and it's gonna be interesting to see if that means maybe there's just less production in, in general and there's less travel mm -hmm. and I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, but yeah, we're definitely taking safety very seriously. And the good thing from a competitive standpoint is that your, com your competition is in the same boat. So we're all putting out and, and, the, uh, and the audience gets it. They actually don't want to see that you're, you know, doing something extravagant and risking someone's lives mm -hmm. or health. Well, Marty, we're coming up on our 15 minutes, so I appreciate your time today, and I'm going to let you get back to work. So thanks for the update, and I hope to talk to you again in the future when we can be more relaxed. And uh, Absolutely. You know, we'll, do, we'll do a longer one. Yes, soon. and, Maybe and with, I do want to uh, get to work together again someday. So, <laughs> so uh, take yes. care, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Bye, Carrie. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.